welcome back. Da, 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 da. Anybody know who that is? No. Me neither. Welcome to Jackson Cloud. I'm Jamin. No, 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 no. This is an Applebee's commercial, but based on an old TV show. It's not Three's Company, is it? You know we can't play that on there. Welcome back, Cotter. Is probably what it is. Welcome <clears throat> back, Cotter. No. I'm Jamin. I'm Casey. And I'm Olivia. And we're doing a series on Revelation, episode five, verse four. No, verse three. Verse four. Verse three. We didn't do three. We're skipping over three. Okay. Why are we skipping three? three? And four. We're taking it sentence by sentence. We're our, starting to pick up pace. Genesis series, we had to skip like paragraphs and you're upset that I skipped one sentence fine sentence three blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of the prophecy and blessed are those who hear and keep what is written in it for the time is near good we did three got it all right good thing I said that now we're blessed hashtag hashtag blessed didn't we do that episode like yeah a couple yeah, weeks we ago yeah pretty sure it was just like last week yeah John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne. From Jesus Christ, faithful witness, firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings on earth. Now that was four to five. Wait. Oh, three Question. verses. No, because five didn't matter. Question. Firstborn yeah. of the dead? Yeah. That's a different episode. You're getting ahead of but yourself. But you read it. Slow down, man. Don't go so fast. <laughs> Hang on. All right. So in verse... That was last episode. In verse 4, and I just kept going, is because you should have heard a certain number come up more than once while I was talking. There was one. The number one? Yeah. Firstborn of the dead. First. No, no, no. That was, that was verse 5. It was a number you that came read up it. at least twice... Within two sentences, very popular revelation number. We were we were discussing about how that reference was actually from two weeks ago, not last week. The firstborn so, reference? No. What? The one from before you wrote. We were still. We weren't. It we was weren't seven. Engaged seven yet. is what he's looking seven, for. Seven. Thank you, man. That was confusing. Seven. Seven comes up. All the time throughout Revelation. In fact, I'm wondering, did I write down how many times? No, wait. Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine? <laughs> Are you upset I knew the answer already? <laughs> no, everyone knows the answer to that, Jamin. So you're, you're just supposed to make it revelation-based. So what you're saying is there was a seven, then the firstborn, and then seven. No. Fine, fine try it again. Why was six afraid of seven? Because six, six, six. No. The beast was afraid when he realized he would... Lose the battle. Yeah, there you go. To the sevens. Yeah. The mm -hmm. seven, 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 six, six, six. So it makes sense. It seven comes up a lot in Revelation. Back on track here. Over fifty times. 50 wow, times. that's a lot. Is yeah. it supposed to be seventy times? Seven. <laughs> 70, seventy times, times of seven. Seven no. times. Comes, it seven comes up. times. It I'll do what it takes to make it right. I don't know what's happening anymore. And you though made what's Mountain Dew. I feel like restarting the episode, <laughs> I am committed now and will try to continue on. Seven comes up over 50 times throughout Revelation. It is an important number that finds itself appearing a lot. Why is the question I want to get at today because we just saw it for the first time in verse 4 and it shall continue to arrive. So what is the meaning of this number? Why is it here all the time? Because 7 is the number of the Lord. Why? Because it's the holy number. Why? Seven tribes of... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's 12 first off. <laughs> <laughs> Which also is a number that will appear, along with its its uh, multiplications of 12 will also appear. But that's not today's number. I knew there's three of stuff. It's like, yeah, in the Trinity. Yeah, yeah. And the unholy Trinity of Revelation. 
There's an unholy trinity. Yeah, you got the beast and then the... Antichrist. You have the dragon, the beast, and the other one. The other one? I was focused on seven. <laughs> don't, don't take me like another... Back okay, to seven. Okay, back to seven. Anyway. Why is seven the holy number? Because that's how many days it took to... To create the world or the universe. Ooh, is that it? That's part of it, yeah. Why would why would that matter though? Like, why would that be such a big deal? Or how would you apply that to Revelation? Maybe that's just God's favorite number. <laughs> there it is. That's the answer. Never mind. Episode's over. <laughs> Look, God just really likes seven. Can we just leave it alone already? But if we take three. Then you take another three, and you add one, it makes seven. Welcome to biblical numerology. Casey already we looks, don't know. He's that gif with the pinpoints and the <laughs> drawing the lines listen, between listen, everything. You can keep asking and letting us come up with crap answers, or you can tell you us. You were already starting to get onto it. I just wanted to see if you could think of that. So you take one, because, then you take no, one. No, no, because six is the number... Of the devil, and God is better than the devil. Seven. By one. By one. By one. Hmm. Somehow that just feels blasphemous when you say it like that. Because, <laughs> uh, see, he, God was seven, so it's just automatically it's there. On. All right, so we were already on to something <laughs> with the week and creation, and then you just stopped and lost your minds. So let's back it up a little bit. What would, what you were saying earlier about seven days in a week mm-hmm. and the story of creation mm-hmm. have to do with Revelation? Oh, because Revelation is the opposite of creation. Everything going to die in fire. <laughs> Not where I was going. <laughs> Not where I was going. <laughs> also, not really what I theologically believe. <laughs> but I really thought you were onto something when you started with the oh. So, <laughs> just to back it up a tad. All right, hang on. <laughs> creation. <laughs> creation. Creation. Mm-hmm. Yes. Seven becomes a number of like completeness within this creation calendar, right? Okay. First day God makes, second day God makes, third day, and he keeps making. But on the seventh day, the whole thing's done. He rests. And so we have the end of creation, the consummation, uh, the the fullness of, of what he was doing there. Okay. So, to some extent, when we think of the number seven, we should be thinking of, like, completion or fullness. Uh, because that's what the creation week ended with, the, the completion of the fullness. So, um, when we have it show up in Revelation, we it's, have a certain kind of... yeah. It's huh? to show us that Revelation is the completion of God's plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or at least that's one thing it should show us. I think there's actually a lot of takeaways in the number seven. Uh, so, first off, the completion. Like, this is... God put us on the earth, told us to be fruitful, multiply, fill the whole earth. Ideally, if we were doing that, we would be cultivating the entire planet to look like heaven, right? Mm -hmm. And Revelation is about the fulfillment of of that idea, is because what God's going to do by the end of it is what? You said blow it up (laughs) with fire. (laughs) Which I don't believe. (laughs) But heaven and earth become one? Yeah, which was the whole idea. Idea, like from the get-go is like make earth look like heaven let earth become heaven on the physical plane right revelation is about that it's about the completion of like this is why you're here this was the plan the fulfillment has come to be so we should be thinking like eden we should be thinking of the whole earth like eden which is where revelation is going to end right she's holding something back she's been wanting to laugh for like I'm sorry. At least a minute now. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I'm still laughing at my joke from earlier. <laughs> this, why is six afraid of seven joke? No, okay. that one wasn't good. <laughs> okay, so that's one meaning of seven. 
what else might we take out of it? Kind of in that same vein. Because seven, eight, nine? <laughs> no. Though, here's a way you could think of eight. Six days God creates. One day he rests. What happens on day eight? Ooh. <laughs> he continues resting. What happens when God is done resting? It's partially just a joke. But it's it's like the rest of creation is finalized, finished. So I guess that's back to the kind of the completion idea. But Revelation is going to be all about the new Eden. It's about new creation. It's about heaven and earth becoming one. It's about uh, a new heaven and new earth. So it's not, in my opinion, the doing away of everything that was before, but it is the cleaning out of everything that doesn't belong and then perfecting everything that does belong into new creation. So when we be thinking of seven, we could be thinking not only of the creation that happened long ago, but we could also be thinking of the recreation of the resurrection and the new creation there. But as Olivia already said, on day seven, what did God do? He rests. And what does that mean? Any ideas? Because we don't talk about Sabbath or... So he, he makes a bed out of oak wood, shears three sheep to make the bed, and then he sleeps in the bed. It doesn't have to be oak wood. Is this a Minecraft? Yes, yes it was. Yes, it was. All right. Clearly, I see we've recorded too many episodes today, and you guys are losing your minds. <laughs> <Yep>. But, <laughs> but uh, so rest, obviously, when we look at like Jewish culture, especially around Jesus' time, they were pretty intense on the Sabbath day and rest, right? It was like, can't do anything. Like, if we see you doing anything, we'll get you in trouble for it. Um, but is that what resting meant in the creation story in every extent? Which seems really weird to me because, like, you do all this extra work on the previous day to make sure mm -hmm. you have food so that you don't actually make food on the day you want food. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why wouldn't you just make it the day you want it? Because it's better when it's fresh. Food is always better when it's fresh. Well, it's part of their... Uh, liturgical practices they're trying to remember something in doing this just like a church when we take communion we're trying to remember this represents Jesus' death for us what I, does sabbath mean for them i get that but you don't do it like the day before like it's the fact that you can't like remember it as you're doing it is the part that's weird to me well that's just part of their tradition though it's weird to me <laughs> you just don't like doing extra work <laughs> No, I don't like, I mean, uh, uh, eh. I don't like doing extra work that makes the product less valuable. I don't think they would always say it's less valuable. No, he's saying because with the food, it's not fresh oh. because you have to wait a day to eat it. Maybe. I don't know. I've never partaken in that. Yeah, you don't do leftovers, so you'd be awful at this. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably not wrong there. Uh, but at least with like uh, um, with Sabbath with rest, like the idea was we are partaking. Well, part of it is you know we're remembering to to give the earth rest and give ourselves rest because we're not slaves. We're not going to work ourselves to the bone. So there is some of that that God made the world and even He rested. But there's also like a a divine rest. Part of what's going on. In ancient cultures, when they talked about... So when you look at uh, creation stories in ancient cultures, whenever a god rested somewhere, it was him putting his presence there. So with Eden, recognizing that they are an ancient culture and they're riffing off other ancient cultures, part of what they're saying is God has built his Garden of Eden, the city, like it's not just this unkept place that's overgrowing and all right you guys just got to mow the lawn you should be thinking like uh like maybe like uh oh, i had someone describe it to me recently uh alice in wonderland you've got the like 
hedges and all these things. Like you should be thinking like this is God's like garden city, like his garden temple is taken care of. Like it's not just wild and un everything's just doing whatever it wants. Like this is like a temple. And here in this temple area is where God has rested. So God's presence is here. And Adam and Eve, they live in this garden with God. So they live by his presence. And so the seventh day is not just a reminder of we rest, but it's a reminder that God rests with us and we are spending time in his presence. Uh, the most beautiful book on this is a Jewish scholar, Abraham Joshua Heschel. Great books. But his book on Sabbath, it's short. But like the way he writes about Sabbath makes me want to love Sabbath so much more. Because <laughs> it's always like this longing for the Holy Spirit's presence is with us when we stop and, and Sabbath together and, and rest with God as his presence rests with us. So for me, like what comes to mind is like being in the moment where like a lot of times we have plans for, oh, what's going to happen next week when the next event happens? But like the idea of rest being in the moment as in not like planning for the future or looking at the past but just being in the moment is kind of an interesting interesting idea that I hadn't thought of before in what way like rephrase so, that so in the sense that like so the seventh day he rested but then on the eighth day he was like with Adam and Eve hmm. so like that was him as you said his presence filled the area hmm. And in my mind and thinking, it sounded like he was in the moment. So, like, although he had just made everything, but on the seventh day, he became in the moment. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah, I mean, that could be, like, a application that... A personal application of a way to think of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, part of the way in which I... When I was talking about the eighth day, I was almost talking about, like, revelation as like the eighth day like it's the seventh it's the seventh day it's the seventh day what happens when god is done resting what happens then new creation i wasn't done on the seventh day like here here we go let's finish this up you know that kind of idea uh which isn't there's nothing about the eighth day in the bible i'm just <laughs> making an analogy uh but yeah i mean god resting with us is his presence filling the earth and being present with us and so, like, in the Jewish weekly calendar, man, it becomes so much more beautiful to me when you think of it like that. Because what I used to think of it as is, like, a not supposed to do anything today. <laughs> I'm just going to be bored. I really got to work, but I got to rest. And if I don't do it, a Pharisee might, like, scold me and hurt me or something. You know, like, I can't do anything. But, like, no, like, the Jewish idea is, like, this is our day where we liturgically, communally, like the Spirit is here with us. This is, on the calendar, this is sacred time. Like, this is Christmas once a week, you know? Like, <laughs> which for Olivia is a really big deal. <laughs> which for Casey is not a big deal at all. <laughs> I just, I'm sitting between polar extremes on the Christmas calendar. But be thinking like, uh, think Friendsgiving. Hmm? Let's think Friendsgiving. That's a holiday we enjoy mm -hmm. it's not like we're not going to accidentally run into family drama typically <laughs> and we're not going to uh have to work real hard to travel across somewhere it's just like hey guys come over let's hang out imagine something like that once a week it's the presence of god our family rests with him as he rests upon us and with us uh and we get to like be right there with him is that not where Revelation is headed? Sounds like I it. think that's where Revelation is headed. Yeah, that's the end of Revelation. Is God's temple, the holy temple, comes out of the sky, out of heaven, lands on the earth, heaven meets earth like a sloppy wet kiss, and then... It all becomes this like one unit. We now live in the new creation where heaven and earth are no longer separated. They're literally intertwined with each other. And in that new, new creation, God's presence is not just like in the temple. Like the, 
entire globe is now God's presence. It's the ultimate resting. And we rest in that, right? The lion shall lie down with the lamb. Uh, You no longer have violence. Everything that was wrong with the world has been done away with. Jesus has cleansed it to become all that it was supposed to be. And we now live in the perfect rest, like physically, but also the perfect rest with God's presence, but also the fullness of creation that we were always destined to have. So like when John uses the number seven constantly, that's a loaded number. That's like, this is everything we've always wanted and was waiting for. Like no wonder John's always going there. No wonder like Jesus is constantly like, related with this number it's because he's the one who brings about this ultimate rest without him we're still in our sins and we're still screwed but with jesus like seven finds its final fulfillment so i think those are a lot of the ways in which that number really sticks out for me uh you guys have any others that you thought of during this i mean we already told you all the ones we could come up with (laughs) yep you were you were tracking. You just got distracted quite a bit for a while. <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. So seven is the magical number of Revelation. Comes up over fifty times, but it's because it's constantly pointing us towards the themes of of where this book is headed. And if we catch on to that from verse four, then the rest of this we're just like, oh man. Seven, <laughs> you know, like I know where this is going. I can't wait to see so how it the ends. The rest of this, the rest of this, because we just talked. We just talked about rest. Oh, the rest of this. Yeah, you need to emphasize the words that you're referencing. <laughs> I tried that. You need to emphasize the words that you're referencing. <laughs> Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below and join us on the Discord. Maybe beat Casey the comment. Bye. No, don't hit it. I was not done with my joke. The restrancing of the... the I want to go eat at the restaurant. You can't steal my joke.